dog is in the house, CC Sabathia. Morning, guys. This is the first time I'm like in person with you guys. I know. This is I, nice. I don't think it's about ever, time. I don't think you've ever been in studio, even when we were on the national show. No, nope, never. never been in studio. It was just always over the phone. Yeah, so it was good. The phone. We did Zoom one time. Yeah, Zoom. We did Zoom but one time. that's different than like sitting in the studio yeah. and actually feeling one another. It's better energy. How's, and by the way, you like the signs? It's the Tierney show. You <laughs> noticed that, right? <laughs> they I left Tiki's it. name off. They, they, they did. You, you're on a little bit of a media tour with the Players Alliance. Mm -hmm. Tell us what this is because we know that black participation um, at the young ages has fallen off a lot. What, mm -hmm. what are you guys trying to do? You and Edwin Diaz, and I know Curtis Granderson is out there with you guys. It was Edwin's baby, but... Tell us, what the what is the Players' Alliance? Yeah, so the Players' Alliance is, is started in uh, the summer of 2020, really in the, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd. And, you know, a lot of players were posting stuff and different things like that. And, you know, we we came together. It was Edwin Jackson, um, uh, Cameron Mabin, and D. Gordon. And we were like, you know, we're tired of posting stuff. Like, let's try to really make a difference. Um, and we came together and, and formed the Players' Alliance. And um, during 2020, that ended, the end of that year, through players money only like we got funded by the players we went on a 36 city tour um with partner with pull up neighbor and we were you know passing out baseball equipment but it was also a time where people needed covid supplies and food so mm -hmm. we were also you know helping out in the community doing that stuff um you know for us we want to just see you know the number is seven percent in in the big leagues right now and when i was playing i thought it was because you know it was no participation in the black community that's not true Kids are playing and playing at a high level. We just need to get them the opportunities to be seen yeah. um, in some of these bigger tournaments and um, the equipment, you know, to be able to keep up with some of these other kids. So um, that's really the mission of the Players Alliance is to see uh, more black and brown kids and people uh, throughout the organizations, not just grassroots, you know, front office, uh, working in the stadium. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, for me, I always – I'll, like, for me, I just want to create more fans in the community, you know, whether that's, you know, bringing in, like, um, w w like uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a place in, in Harlem, like um, Sylvia's, like yeah. Sylvia's or something, and bring it to the stadium so people can come and, like, feel connected. You know uh, what I'm saying? Actually, like, yeah. some of these different restaurants to, like, actually build baseball fans. Um, Red Rooster, you know, some of these different places. I think it would be a lot of fun if we could put those places in the stadiums around the country and get the black community back at the baseball Well, park. you make it familiar. You make it something that they're, that they're used to or something that they feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny because we often talk about the lack of young black athletes playing baseball. And we want to say it's just because the sport is boring. And that's not that's not the case. Mm -mm. <clears throat> it seems like it's economic. Yeah. It seems like they simply don't have the money for the equipment, which you just talked about, but also the tournaments mm -hmm. and the AA like all this all these big, you know, organizations that cost money to be a part of. You, you get can't priced just be good. Yeah, you get priced out of it. You know, little league, you know, the price they keep the cost pretty much down. You know, it's it's under a hundred bucks. Most of the time it's seventy five to mm -hmm. twenty five to seventy five bucks. When you turn 13, you get on the big field, now you have to travel, and now it's all travel ball. There's no real leagues for these kids from 13 to 18, you know what I'm saying, 13 to 17. So, um, you know, for us at the Players Alliance, it's up to us to create that space for these kids to be able to have a free place to go and, and, and enjoy the game. And by the way, it's not, we're talking to CeCe Sabathia here on the show, it's not even just the travel, which is a huge impediment for a lot of people. Just look at the price of a bat. Yeah. I mean, when I was young, I would have a black magic. I'd have it for two years, depending upon if I grow out of it, whatever. I mean, you've got these, the two-piece alloys. They're three forty nine, four forty nine, four forty nine, and then they put the four forty nine. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. just make it five hundred twenty bucks. <laughs> I know you're not helping. Me. You we just buy it anyway. <laughs> you just had to buy a bat for Colt, right? Well, and Santa did, of course. I mean, Santa, <laughs> Santa, 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 to, uh, Santa to acquired that. the bat for Colt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. It's true. It's crazy. So I think that, and, and it's funny because growing up, we're about the same age. So seven percent of blacks in the game now. But back then, whether if you were a hitter, you had Jim Rice. Mm -hmm. If you were a pitcher, you had Doc. Before that, you had Gibson. You had Vita Blue. Who are the guys that you look to? Because we tend to gravitate toward our own as kids. Because we just, we kind of see like, we see somebody who looks like us. Mm -hmm. and we're like, we can do it. And I don't think it's dissimilar to, and I, I don't think it's bad to say this. People are afraid to. But if you're a white point guard, and there's no white guards in the NBA, you're going to probably at point, some point say... I don't know if I can make it, man, because mm -hmm. I don't see myself out there. Who are the guys that you looked at and said, that's who I want to be? You know what? It was Dave Stewart. 
Mm-hmm. And he walked Smoke, into my right? he walked into my boys and girls club when I was nine years old, and yeah. it wasn't even watching him on the field. Okay, it was him coming to my boys and girls club. He came in for like thirty minutes, signed autographs, and it changed my life. Like I like I became a baseball fan that day when I when I met him. And and for me, I wanted to one be a baseball player. I wanted to be the ace of the Oakland A's, yeah. <laughs> and then two, I wanted to have the same effect that he had coming back to the hood on on me on another kid. So I've always. You know, wanted to be present in the community because of that that encounter that I had with Dave at nine years old. So it was Dave Stewart and Barry Bonds were my guys. Mm-hmm. Ricky Henderson, obviously, yeah. but but the, by two were Dave Dave Stewart and Barry. Bonds. Are you still friendly with him? Talk I to am. Still. He I was am. an agent I, for a long time. He was, right? a, he was an agent for a long time, and I actually just got a chance to hang out with them uh, at Reggie Jackson's uh, golf event. So for me, it's still like hanging out with my heroes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. anytime I'm around Barry Bonds or Ken Griffey Jr. or even Reggie Jackson, it's these are the guys that turned me into a baseball player. Hold on. He, does, he, I gotta, he, he says Reggie. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We got a little issue with Reggie. You got a Reggie, Reggie story? Re- of no, course. no, we, we got an issue with Reggie's a turncoat. Reggie's not a Yankee anymore. <laughs> well, Reggie, what in the world does I Reggie mean, Jackson do? He was do? an angel. He was a boy. <laughs> he, was a, he was an Oreo. He yeah. was an A. So... You know, it kind of is what it is. Oh, yeah, he he doesn't God. need Dave Stewart as he, an agent because his wife is an agent now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How is Amber? Yeah. Is she doing good? She's doing really well. It keeps her busy. Yeah. Um, you know, she's uh, she's doing it, man. She she kind of uh, took over the role of being my agent at the end of my career. So it's just been a natural progression to her for her to turn into, you know, agent at CAA. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, you're talking about, you know, when Dave Stewart came into uh, the hood over there with you and your kid. But this is why you started Pitch In. Right. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what you and Amber are trying to accomplish. This is get back into the communities. I know you do it out west in uh, in Vallejo where you guys are from, but also here, right? Building fields and giving backpack drives, all those things. I mean, your impact, you are doing that, right? I know you saw it when you were a kid, but you are actually doing it. And that's a commend that's commendable for you. Thank you. I'm trying. I, and, and just for me, like I said, I just want to be visible. Like I don't want to throw money at things. Like if it's something if I'm having something in the Bronx, I want to show up. If I'm having something in Vallejo, I want to show up. So if I'm having something in Cleveland, I want to show up. So um, you know, that though that's really important to me is is to be present at, at these things. Dude, how do you have time? I mean, you're working <laughs> I don't you, you, got, you, know, you, got, you got pitch in, now you're doing the players alliance stuff. <laughs> Follow the Ed son is a stud. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Little C, he's not little anymore. Yeah. Little C is down at Georgia Tech about the players first game. You got, you know, you're working for the commish. You yeah. got a, you got an office with a view. <laughs> I mean, how do you have time to do all this stuff, bro? You know what? It's just kind of like my life. People always say like, "What are you doing? Like you like your life is crazy, but it's this is kind of like what I'm used to. Amber keeps everything in a calendar, tells me where I need to be, dresses me right, and then I just I'll be on my way. <laughs> oh my God. Uh you're a huge Raiders fan. Huge Raiders Gore's fan. Gone. They did him dirty. He's not gonna <laughs> did help they do him out. dirty? Uh, they benched him. They no, he didn't want, him. No, they well, didn't, no, no, listen. He didn't go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He didn't want him, BT. He didn't want him. No, it's not even that I didn't, I didn't want him. Like uh, for me, when when you get benched, like you just leave the team, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like why you couldn't have been there to help out Jared Stidham or you know why else? they bench him? Jared it wasn't working, oh, and man. Jared Stidham had a great game. Yeah, a yeah. great no, game. Here we go. <laughs> he, had a, he had a great game. Right, so Derek Carr, come. listen. I think it's going to be Rodgers. I need it to be Rodgers. I need it to be Rodgers. If it's Carr. Can he handle what this city's all about? Oh, here in New York. Yeah. Now, he uh, thought you meant Rodgers, too. Oh, I thought you meant Rodgers, no, to, to, to the Raiders. Right, why? Because Devontae Adams, these boys? <laughs> exactly. You're not getting Rodgers. We're getting him. But if we don't, can Derek Carr handle New York? Uh, I, I mean, that's that's always a question for any athlete. Can You've they handle New York? You know what I'm what saying? Do you think? Give it. The, I, don't give me a tap you, dance. No, can no, he handle I, this? I think I think he'll stand in front of his locker and answer questions honestly. And I think that's all you can ask for as an athlete playing in New York. Fair. You know what I'm saying? Fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I and I think and I told he Tiki, I think he'll emotional. be good here. He might get a little emotional. And that that may be a problem, but <laughs> yeah, getting a little emotional. But I, but he'll he'll stand there and ask answer uh, all the questions truthfully, and that's all you can ask for. Is, I mean, you know, yeah, standing standing in front of your locker with the New York media and just you know wearing it when you when you play well and not taking all the wearing it when you play bad and not taking all the credit when you play well. When, when, did they that have team, the bad. just get back to get the baseball real quick because some of the rule changes that are, that are coming down. Did they have the the runner on on in extra innings did they have that the advanced no, runner? No, I started in twenty twenty. So it was after you. It was so after you. Did, yeah. You didn't have it. But no, but I love it though. By the way, it's you, permanent now. They just announced it. Yeah, yeah I love that. Extra innings moving forward. So it's permanent. You love this. Love that. Why? Me too. We don't get paid for extra. We don't get paid for overtime, guys. <laughs> no time let's get this to get, CC. Let's get this game over with. <laughs> yeah. And most of the time, like whoever pitches those extra inning games, the guy gets sent down. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he gets penalized for that. So let's get the game over with and keep our roster intact and – you know, not penalize a guy for pitching two or three innings in, in, in extra. And so he gets some strategy, innings. too. It's almost like the old school stuff. You know, I'm not saying you're going to go hitting and run and and, and, and everybody's going to purposely but hit behind a runner. But are you going to bunt the runner over? You know what I mean? You I wouldn't get mind to, that. You Hell, get to see the strategy. Yeah. The, and, and a lot of the times, the, the home team end up winning the game anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, the, the, the visiting team scores a run, but the home team always comes back mm-hmm. and scores a run or two. So, most it works Most pressure. Out. Give me the, um, which Yankee has the most pressure going into the season? On him, can you see a Rodon? Can you see a? Well, it's got to be Judge, judge right? to replicate. It's be judge. Where are we with nah, this? I mean, I think it's all of them, right? Like they've came, they've kind of fallen short, though. You know, even since I've been there, since 2017, against this Astros organization. So, I think the pressure's on everybody in that clubhouse. I think they're all feeling it. But um, for me, if I had to pick one person, it, it, for me for the season, it would be Luis Severino because mm. oh, we need wow. we need Sevy to be healthy. He's he's an ace when he's healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just hasn't been able to pitch, you know, thirty starts for us during the season. But if he can do that for us, I feel really good about what, you know what this team would be able to do. Can I? Now listen, we speak freely on the show. You know how <laughs> Don't, it is, go there, Don't go there, BT. Don't go there. I respect Cashman. Cashman's, <laughs> oh, on, on. <laughs> Cashman's driving me nuts. So he goes on Chicago <laughs> Station last week. Yankee fans are overreacting. Yankee fans are spoiled. The Yankees are the ones who established this championship or failure mindset. Now, I think that that's ridiculous. It's hard to win. It's hard to win. I I get that. There's got to be balance, man. But when you lose the same way to the same team every year like they do to the Astros – and you don't address the holes with This year what? wasn't the same way. I, I they they kind of kicked it, our it, butt this year. Well, yeah. that's true. It wasn't it, even close. Right. You're, you're right. It wasn't even close it was this year, yeah. And they hit 162 against the Guardians. So I know he got the extension. I know he's done a good job here. Cashman's got to get a grip on what he tells us what we're seeing. What, what, it's like he's trying to tell us that we're seeing something that we're not seeing. See, like, this, this is, this is why nuts. Cash won't come on our show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he appreciates the honesty. Come on, I know you're well, a straight I, I shooter. Mean, but, yeah, but I, I think I'm kind of with them, though, because this team is good enough to win. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's are been they, one of though? Are they I, really? I think they are. Really? Like, I mean, but, like, what else would you want to do? Left field. You know what I'm saying? Left field, a little more contact. A little more speed. I mean, that's their shortstop, better third baseman. Should I keep going? Yeah, a lot of things we can change. <laughs> yeah, Tiki's right. That's why I'm always like, yo, T, get your boy Cece on the show. He's like, I don't know if I want to bring Cece. Yeah, you can start grilling him with this stuff. Man, I don't know. Well, he, I mean, works, I, he works for the league now. I do, for the but he's no, a Yankee. I do. I am a Yankee. I do think that they are good enough to win. I do. And I and I but and I think that we were good enough to win in 2017. You know what I'm saying? That it's, I agree with. I think we were good enough to win in 2019. It's just some of these different so, things. So, where what's, so what's the X it's factor? Hard. Like, you go back to 09 when you first got here. Like, what is the X factor? Because there has to be something, right, that, I think, that gives you that edge over whoever the opponent is. We're talking about the Astros, but whoever it is. What is the X factor? Because that's kind of what Yankee fans are longing for. Yeah, I think our X factor in 09 was our pitching staff. Was you know was, so therefore Sevy. So that, was, that's why you talk about Sevy. It was the big three. It was me, AJ, and and Andy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So if you have Sevy, Rondon, and Garrett Cole, I feel really good about them. You know, pitching a whole season and getting into the postseason. You know, if you look at the teams that have won the World Series the past couple of years, you know everybody goes to the opener and they have you know these short stints with the starters and all that stuff. But the teams that win mm-hmm. have three, two or three starters that go deep into the game that can save the bullpen. That can pitch deep into October. Here's what the Yanks and we're gonna get, let you get going here in a second. I could do this all day, mm-hmm. just pepper you with stuff. I think Yankee fans are loving it. CC's with us here on the show, by the way. But I think what's been missing is maybe an odd way to describe it, but lineup character. And what I mean by that is, like when the Yankees first won in '96, O'Neill, Boggs, these guys grinding out at bats, ball four, ten pitch at bats. Yeah. No, 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 you're right. And this I mean, team doesn't have but that you, enough. But, but if if Benintendi's not hurt and DJ's in that lineup, yep. the lineup's a lot different. I in agree October. with that. I do agree with so that. So they made the moves last year. They just they ended up getting hurt. Yeah. But if Benny's in that lineup and you got a, a healthy DJ, mm-hmm. that lineup top to bottom is completely different. And now you're not worried about what IKF is doing at the plate. You just need him catch the ball. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So I do. It's I get just that. Injuries. You think Volpe's going to make the team? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I haven't seen much of Volpe play. I, yeah. I, I know Peraza's really good. Remember the last really time good. we talked to you, you said the same thing. Yeah, I haven't, I seen, I haven't seen him play yet. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting him down to spring training and putting eyes on him and let see. Me get, let me get two legal wide things around you that are coming as well. The pitch clock, you mm-hmm. love it? You hate it? I love it. I think hitters are going to be mad about the pitch <laughs> clock. Pitchers are going to find a way 
to speed hitters up. You know what I'm saying? They'll find a way to get extra time, whether it's have the catcher hold on to the ball or do whatever before you throw it back. But I think it's going to help um, with just not so much the time of the game, mm-hmm. just speeding up and getting to the action. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think with the pitch clock, it's going the velocity is going to drop because guys can't just throw the ball as hard as they can, take 30 seconds, walk around the mound, and get back on there and hump up. So I think velocity is going to drop. You're going to see more contact. And with the shift – yeah, being gone. That was the second you'll one. You see I was more ask. balls being put in play. You see more action on the base. So you think I this like is going to hurt starting pitchers or really all pitchers because of the lack of velocity? Like they just can't. Like we, I'm thinking I don't back. Think it's I'm, gonna... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to the, you know uh, Degrom last year against Atlanta. Uh, down in Atlanta, I was at the game. He just kept throwing fastball. It was 102, 100, 99. I mean, he didn't do anything else. Like, he's not going to be able to do that with the pitch clock. Yeah, I think you have to learn how to pitch in and out again. Like, guys going to have to learn how to move the ball to all four different quadrants. Right now, guys just throw the balls literally as hard as they can for 75 to 80 pitches, and then they'll get the next guy to come in and do the same thing. I think with the pitch clock, it's going to get back to you having to learn how to pitch, having stamina, and being able to move the ball in and out. I know hey, I know you got to go, but I got to ask you, Nestor Cortez, can he replicate what he did last year? He was my favorite story of the Yankees last Absolutely. Season. I think for, with Nestor, all it is is just the velocity. If he's throwing over 92, he's going to be hard to hit. 